I feel bad because we're going to have to destroy his bubble nest, but we'll make a new one. So today I'm going to be cleaning my fish bowls and so I decided that I would show you how I do that. So I'm just going to show you before and all the steps that I go to clean my one gallon fish bowls and then also kind of do a time lapse for you to show you how long it takes because it does take me around 45 minutes to get all three of them. Now I will have my mom helping me out so it does speed it up a little but yeah so I'm just going to shortly walk you through the process so let's go do it together. So this is Horatio's bowl before and of course it is January 2nd today, so we've just kind of come out of the Christmas stuff, so today we're going to put away all the Christmas stuff and go with the more generic things. And this is Journeys before. And lastly, we got Draco's bowl before the water change. Let's get down to it. So I'm just going to start off by taking out all of the ornaments out of the bowl and putting them on the sink right here, right next to my sink. Now one thing to always remember is make sure that you don't have any soap on your hands because the soap is toxic to your fish. And also kind of be aware of where he is at all times. I don't have to worry about with him so much as coming near my hand, but some of my other fish, they'll try to get right up there. So you just gotta be careful when you're moving the objects out of the bowl that you're not harming your fish in any way. Next, you're going to want to put some of the water that he has into his bowl into one of the cups. I just have it laid in the sink right there. And my mom is going to dump the water into the cup so that way there's not too much of a shock that he's in a different sort of water temperature. And just kind of fill it up. And then when you have the bowl, just grab a little bit of a small nut that won't hurt his fins too much. And then, of course, you can scoop him out and put him into the cup there. And the cups that I got from PetSmart, they actually say no bet on them because that's when they came at the store. So they only got their own little cup and then put on the lid in case he tries to jump out. My fish don't really jump that much, but safety precautions. Okay, so when it comes to washing out a bowl like this, I do 100% water changes because it's only one gallon, and when I add the water at the same temperature, and so it doesn't hurt them at all. But you want to rinse out the bowl just by using some tap water and rubbing your hands along the sides to remove any slime that might have gotten on the sides, and then wipe it out with a tea towel or any kind of small cloth and then repeat the process about a couple of times. And in order for all the stones not to go down the drain, I put in one of those little plug things that it lets the water through, but not anything too big. And one thing I'm gonna be adding is these new ornaments that were in my previous video that I showed you earlier. And these are the ones that my fish got for Christmas from me. So this one was for Horatio, so this is the little ship and the little anchor slash life preserver combination. And I'm also going to be combining it with these blue stones. These stones have also been previously washed from the last time that I used them, but because I have not used the new ornaments yet, make sure you pre-wash them without soap before adding them into your bowl just to get off whatever might have been in the store from shipping and handling and touching. So because I only want to take half the stones because I'm switching, uh, I'm sharing these stones between two of my fish, I just use this little cup here and I add them in this way. And I don't like to drop them from too high, just so they don't scratch up the base of the bowl. And once I think I got about half, I just smooth them out and then I can start adding the decorations. So here's the ornament and to just clean it, just get some water, make sure it's not too warm and run it under the water like so. Wash off the plant and all the little crevices inside just to get any, any dust or anything that could be on it. And then I'm just gonna place it in the bowl. And I'm putting it right up front. And I'm also going to rewash his plant that he had earlier, this one here, because he does like to lie on these leaves. So even though I'm kind of done with this plant, he's not, so I have to put it back in. And then I'm also going to wash the life preserver and add that into here as well. And then he should be pretty much done. So his theme is kind of like a like a nautical theme. So that's kind of what I was going for. 
So now to add the water, you want to make sure that you add the water to the bowl about the same temperature that he came out of. So as I'm just going to pan over to the sink here, basically what you're going to do is fill this up with water that is approximately the same temperature as the water he came out of. And I have a little thermometer that just floats inside of there and make sure the temperature is around the same. There's is kept at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 26 degrees Celsius. And once it hits that temperature, then add in your water conditioner, and that should be at the instructions that are on the bottle. So this is the water conditioner that I use. It is the API Beta Water Conditioner. And this one was around $4 from PetSmart. The instructions for this one are to use a half gallon or a half teaspoon per gallon. So this one carries about two gallons, so generally I add a teaspoon into this bucket. So when the water hits the right temperature, I'll add this to it, and then we can add the water into his bowl, and I'll probably have enough left over to fill up another one. So the water is now pretty much set at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where it was. So we're adding in the teaspoon of water conditioner, and then just kind of let it mix. And how we mix it is we just use this plastic spoon and we stir it around because you want to make sure that the water conditioner is spread out evenly throughout all of the wash. So now I'm scooping out the water and, well my mom is, and putting it into the bowl now. And the reason we do this is because the bucket is like really heavy, so I can't actually pick it up because I'm not strong. So we use pour it in through the cup that way and also the easier you spread it, it doesn't like knock the stones or anything into the ornaments, so it keeps everything relatively steady. Okay, and at this point we're gonna stop and add in the heater. And you wanna make sure that you leave a little bit of a space so that you have enough room for the heater to go in because the heater will obviously take up space and will cause the water level to rise. And the same goes for the thermometer. So we'll add that in, but first, I'm gonna wash it. So now I'm gonna add in his heater now that we have washed it. And like I said, I'm gonna put it behind the plant just to disguise it a little bit better. And it helps if you push the suction cup against the side of the bowl and kind of attach the bottom suction cup and then slide it down attached, opposed to having to attach it when it's all the way fully in. And then you want to slide it down as close to the bottom as you can, again for the purpose of the water line and evaporation causing it to rise a little bit, but you want to make sure you don't put the cord underwater too. And once you have that, then you'll quickly add the thermometer and then of course your fish, and then you're pretty much done. Thank you. So we're going to add in the thermometer right here. And like I said, you want to make sure that you can see it because this one you don't want to hide because if you can't read it, it's not much help. As long as you can kind of see the target range, which you can see in between the plant there. Is that attached? Okay, that's good. And yeah, now we're just going to add the fish. Ta-da! <laughs> So this is the finished bowl and my little happy fish. So now to move on to the next one. And if you feel like topping up the water at all, if you're not worried about your fish jumping out, you can also put the water up to here. I generally do top it up a little bit because my fish don't jump. I don't know, I have weird bettas. So you're just gonna kinda top it up to make sure that it's at the level mark. And again, this also helps against evaporation problems. The higher the water is at the start. And then you are officially done. And of course your official is kind of be moving around and checking it out. As you can see, he's checking it out there. But we don't have time to stare at him because we have two more fish to do and it's almost five o'clock. <laughs>
So this is her final product. As you can see, it is very pink, purple, and just overall very girly with the matching purple stones and her new plant. And I've also got some pillars in the background there. And then here he's kind of going for like a deep blue ocean theme. So I've got the sunken log, the dolphins, and two different blue plants, and then the leaf, of course. So that is what he gets. Hey everyone, so I'm just going to do a quick closing because my camera's about to run out of space. But I just wanted to thank you for watching this video and I hope that this kind of helped you out if you want to know how long it took to clean a fishbowl or if you were wondering how to do it, if you were planning on getting a fish soon, or if you were just curious to see what goes on into creating my... Okay, so now I'm gonna get going on her now and I'm kind of gonna do it in a time lapse for you so you guys can see it a little bit faster. See you next time, bye. <laughs> that's gonna be my intro. <laughs> not, not that part, but that's, that's laughing ridiculously.